source version available for, for really integrated models. So this uh, work uh, is uh, probably been under the supervision of uh, Juliano and Josver and Jean Michel Maillet. And uh, so when I arrived, uh, uh, they had already a new recitals about quantum separation of variables, and we tried to extend this to the graded model in this uh, archive of both and uh, add the results in this, uh, this presentation. I want to show, uh, I want to recall some of uh, what our grading uh, directly impacts the model, how to construct the uh, separation, uh, separated basis for this model, and then how to use it to diagonalize the quantum matrix to solve the spectral problem. And I say in some special cases because we have a conjecture and uh, we have been able to check it uh, only uh, in some special cases. Uh, so first, some context. Uh, so uh, Tobal Vetkovic has already talked a bit about uh, separation of variables, so I, I'll, go, uh, I'll go quick there. So this is uh, starting from the non graded case because it's simpler. Um, when you get the matrix from the, uh, from the invariant intensity of an algebra and then you construct Anatomy uh, by transferring quantum space and uh, making a product among uh, shared auxiliary spaces, a uh, shared, shared auxiliary space, and uh, you need to impose some boundary conditions. So here we close the chain with the quasi uh, quasi parity boundary condition uh, that are included with this this matrix K. That means that you uh, you identify this item plus one with the first one up to this uh, isomorphism. Taking the trace of the monotony matrix, you obtain some the, the transfer matrix and for commuting thanks to young, young max schemes you want to diagonalize this uh, this uh, one parameter family of commuting charges and from there you can extract uh, the reverse Hamiltonian so if you take the number two uh, and the log derivative of the transfer matrix you gain the usual uh, one cross spin chain with quasi parity boundary condition and what we want from the system is basically solve the spectral problem so the eigenstates and eigenvalue compute square products from factors and correlation function from there, taking the chromatized and limits by taking the L of the length of the chain to infinity and uh, find the continuous theory uh, uh, compute things for a common matter. So, to diagonalize the transfer matrix, uh, that is just this trace of the boundary. Uh, the first approach is to diagonalize it directly, but because this is a matrix that is a, a square matrix of size n to the power L, this would work only for small L. So that's why we have beta and das, where the algebraic version is basically just creation of the right terms on to the, uh, to the vacuum state. Uh, and then you have to, uh, you, uh, so saying that these are eigenstates, you get some integrated equations. Uh, but it's not always um, um, working sometimes. It, for some, for some um, models, you cannot find some to the right terms state zero. And for higher rank states, uh, for higher, higher rank models, uh, you, you have nested beta equations, uh, the equivalent of this phi creation operator is uh, difficult to construct them back here. So there is room for another approach that is quantum separation of variables. And it has been pioneered by uh, Miles Kianin at the end of the, of the last century. And uh, the idea, uh, it originates from, uh, from the classical uh, theory, is just to rewrite the equation in the right or, uh, coordinates in the right reference frame, the right variables, and uh, you are able to decouple them and uh, solve them independently. So for quantum system, how does it work? So well, first you have to, uh, to write a separate basis. And so to write a basis, you just take a family of uh, simple spectrum commuting operators and then very common eigenvectors from the basis and you can label them uh, uniquely using the uh, eigenvalues of the separators. And these operators are separated variables for your transfer matrix T. For any eigenvectors, you, your wave function in this <coughs> basis of factorized, and each factor is obviously separate equations. So here we, the equation is separate, separated because we have only y n involved. And this d just uh, stands for the shift inside the, the spectrum of this big y variable. So you have some kind of dimensional reduction from an n to the power of spectral problem. You factorize that as uh, n dimensional spectral problems to the, the n of them. Okay, so how do we do that for graded models? Uh, I'll talk a bit about graded structure, just to introduce that. Um, so graded objects, uh, the graded vector space is basically a space that you can decompose as a direct sum of two subspaces, one odd, uh, one even and one odd. And so I'll, uh, I'll, uh, I'll demo 
includes the dimension of the uh, even space by m and the odd space by m. And it's useful to to, to take the indices, uh, to make the indices bear as a gradient. So you, if you have an index between zero and m, it will be uh, uh, upgraded upgraded zero and one if it's uh, otherwise. And so to fix uh, the subspaces v zero and v one, if you take for example the Siemens uh, space, you just take the first m uh, vector of your uh, canonical basis and you make them even and the other, the other ones are odd. So from there all the, the other spaces and uh, structures has to be graded as well. So you have uh, a dual graded space, uh, you have the, 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 the algebra of inner operator on this vector space has to be graded as well, so matrices. And uh, even operator is uh, an operator that does not shuffle uh, the visual and v1 space. So if you write it as a block matrix, you have uh, three block, uh, four blocks. And that just means that the orthogonal blocks vanish. Uh, it becomes interesting when you consider uh, tensor spaces, because as you know, when you uh, have two fermions that switch it, then you, you get a uh, sign. And so, uh, when passing uh, graded objects uh, for each other, uh, you uh, you have a sign if uh, if uh, those objects are both odd. That's why you, that's why it's easier to there. And you have to consider graded commutator uh, rather than a uh, and when you're constructing the dual for tensor uh, for tensor space, it's important to uh, to take great uh, care of all the signs because if you want your uh, this action that means if you have a vector and another vector, if you have this measure, uh, you have to put all these signs inside the definition to compensate for uh, all the all the signs that come from uh, uh, passing vectors and covectors for each other. Okay, so how do you construct their matrix? Just well, we need the permutation operator, so it's just written there. And then taking the the, the again of the G11 super algebra, uh, the fundamental layer matrix is there, pair matrix, uh, that is just uh, the first order one, is this one. So it's basically exactly the same expression as in uh, the non graded case, but you have a graded permutator, a permutation operator. And Young Baxter equation writes, exactly the same way, but sometimes you find it written in coordinates, especially in the uh, old Soviet papers. Uh, and so uh, how does that work? Well, is ju you just need to consider the, the array of numbers, well, the, the matrix uh, rather than the operators, so you act on the canonical basis uh, with that this expression, and when you act on the canonical basis of the free full tensor product, uh, there are signs that appear, because you have to flip to to switch uh, some uh, vectors in order to put them in front of the right memory. Okay, so we're now in a position to explain how the separate basis uh, uh, works for our cooperated model. So first, uh, let's just say that the construction of the fundamental model is exactly the same as in the non-graded case. But you have to take the twist in the GLM and supergroup rather than, uh, uh, well, if you use uh, GLN sub uh, E supergroup uh, in order to preserve the Young Baxter scheme and to take the supertrace of the monomial. So, the supertrace, if you write your monomial operator as a, as a block matrix in the, in the auxiliary space, A, B, C, D, the supertrace is just the sum of the bosonic elements and then you have to subtract the fermionic ones. So, if, uh, if it's written A, B, C, D, it's trace of A minus the trace of D. Sorry, it's about twist. Do you say both diagonal twist? Because uh, if you take a generic, it will not have to be Yeah, yeah. So Unless you use some peculiar notation of first line. Okay, so there I, I, I'll just need actually even twist. Oh. So I'll have block diagonal twist. And, uh, but you could you could introduce uh, the whole uh, Lee supergroup GLM in one of the grass manual, and then you will still have this, uh, this expression. And then you have all the grass manual all around. Okay, so there are numerous ways to construct separate bases, but this is one, uh, and so so let me state what it is. So I'm taking an even twist with simple spectrum, and then uh, this family of correctors form the basis of the dual ordinator space. We claim it's separated, and uh, so how do we construct them? We take some first corrector S, and then we act with the transfer matrix evaluated in the homogeneities at each site, and it's raised to some power H n. 
with that goes between zero and n plus n minus one. So you have n plus n to the power L vector, and you are free have a basis. And we say it's separated for the transfer matrix, provided that, uh, for, well, for almost any choice of initial vector and the homogeneity is psi n. And what it means is, uh, well, for being homogeneities, it just means that you take them in generic position, so you have no relation between them. Between them. And then for the initial vector, uh, it's sufficient to take, for example, this kind of vector. So, well, let's let the equation that I explained in a bit. You can take it as a, as a dual of a tensor product form, and as a one side a small s vector uh, has to satisfy some condition on its coordinates. Uh, and uh, I'll explain uh, in proof what's uh, what's uh, what I mean. So, as I said, we have m plus n to the power of vectors, and we want to prove it's a free family to prove it's a basis. So to do so, we can just compute this determinant, and if it does not vanish, then we have a basis. Uh, and the key idea here is to uh, remark that uh, the transfer matrix has a polynomial dependency in the homogeneities, uh, and also in the twist matrix entries. So because it's polynomial, uh, so could, if could you, you please yes. submit your, uh, your notation? What is the H1, HL in general? Is that for the H1, HL? These are the powers um, inside the definition of the, of, of the separate basis. Or this variable. Okay, and you let them take from all the. Between zero and n plus one minus one. And the EJ is what? It's the canonical unit vector on the next page? Ah, yeah. Yeah, it's a canonical basis. Okay. So J is from one to n plus n to the power L. Okay, good. Okay, so because we have a polynomial dependency in this psi n, uh, if we show in one point or in one limit that uh, this expression does not vanish, then it will be true everywhere except in the root of this polynomial. So almost everywhere. Um, and so we can take one limit, for example, the asymptotic one. So taking psi n as n psi, where psi is some complex number, uh, and uh, we, that we, uh, that we go to the infinity. Uh, we can compute this quantity. And so the leading term inside the transfer matrix is basically just the twist matrix at the side end. So this color product, the leading term is just this one, so, so uh, the, this one, so the product, the tensor product of the twist matrix raised to this H1 HL power. And taking the great care with the other side, you can factor this as this product of L uh, matrix elements. And there is just, um, well, the canonical basis was on one side associated to this vector of the canonical basis of the whole Hilbert space. And now, uh, if your determinant by linearity just factorizes as a product of determinants of these quantities, and this determinant does not vanish, and the reason is because we took k with simple spectrum, and we took some condition onto one side small s vector uh, such that. Uh, all the Tetrazoic coordinates at the right places make that this does not vanish. And this relates to the Jordan block decomposition of the k matrix. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we have a, a basis, we claim that it's separated. And so now we, we have to solve the spectral problem to show this. So, spectral problem is just uh, one of the couples, uh, couples of a uh, TU polynomial and uh, some uh, vector t such that t. And you can rewrite this like this. So rather than comparing states, you're comparing numbers that are the coordinates inside the separated basis. So if you show this for each H1 HL of vectors, then you have, you've shown that you have a connected vector. And what you want to do is you terribly want to act with this T on the covector there. And knowing how to act with this T there, it will solve your spectral problem because it, you, you will be able to write your expression, your expression in the like this uh, in GM. So how to do so? Well, uh, let me just put the expression back of, of the separated basis. It's in the, you have T inside the Xi N. So you want to recover that. And to do so, you just interpolate by Lagrange interpolation in the Xi N. And, uh, and you have to fix the asymptotic that way, but we know this with just a uh, super trace of T. And then it's easy. Uh, either Hn is smaller than its maximum value, n plus n minus 1. So there is always a room to absorb one more because it's just powers. So from Hn, 
acting with TIN, you go to a chain plus one. But if you already have the maximum values, then you need some kind of closure relation to lower the degree to redecompose the basis, uh, to re redecompose this action of the vector on the whole basis. And so, for example, something like this would do the trick, that is T psi n to the power of n plus n, we decompose on smaller powers, but also on smaller uh, on the other sides. So we're looking for something like this. In the non-graded non case, uh, what gives us this is uh, fusion relation. So this, re this originates from the representation theory of the Lorraine uh, Lie algebra. So here we have to talk of the representation theory of the least project. So taking the AMN, that is S, SUMN, so this is super algebra, uh, this, this uh, whole stuff has been uh, characterized and classified by CAC and others. Uh, so basically, it's just, you, can, you can write them uh, using some generators, the diagonal ones and the raising and lowering ones. They are all even generators, except for these two, EM plus and EM minus, which are, which are both up. And your irreducible representation of the least super algebra for our uh, highest uh, weight representation. So you can generate them starting from an IO with highest weight vector. And uh, such that uh, it's annihilated by the rating operators and they are eigenvectors of the diagonal one. And these AI numbers, they are like the, you can use them to label the representation. And so you use CACTIC diagram. This is a diagram for the AM and uh, least super algebra to, uh, to enumerate them. But you can also use young diagrams, and uh, this will provide. Uh, this will be useful uh, later as uh, as we will see. Um, these young diagrams usually, when you're working with the, on the non-graded case, are contained inside inside the strip because you cannot uh, anti-symmetrize more than the number of generators. But here, uh, more than the rank of the algebra. But here, you are uh, you are contained inside the fat loop. That means that you have a direction for the bosonic for the bosonic number and number one for the fermionic number. And you can extend your young diagram in infinitely in both directions. But you, um, you cannot put boxes outside of this fat loop, otherwise the representation vanishes. Uh, something to understand is that if you take one young diagram, it gives you one unique Kaglinkian diagram, so one unique reducible representation. Starting from one irreducible representation, you have several choices of young diagrams. So several young diagrams leads to the same representation. And that's something that we will use later. So now uh, what we do is uh, we can construct fused transfer matrix matrices. And to do so, uh, rather than putting the same representation as in, uh, as in the quantum space of the auxiliary one, we can use whatever irreducible representation we want. Provided that we, we uh, say symmetrize the right way and uh, then take into superfluous and space. So we have a whole bunch of new commuting transfer matrices. Uh, useful ones would be the, the one associated to rectangular young diagrams, and we know them like this TAB, where A is the width and B is the height. And this whole family of uh, transfer matrices, uh, they are not independent. Uh, because of fusion, so that when you tensor through the representation, you can decompose it as a as a direct sum of uh, sub representations. And so basically, that's like spin one half times spin one half plus spin one plus spin zero. And so you have fusion relations. Okay, so we have uh, a bunch of property now for this um, TAD matrices. So first is polynomiality. So um, they, are, they have a polynomial dependency in the U parameter, but you have a lot of zeros that are central, and so if you divide by the right polynomial, uh, you recover an, an L-degree polynomial. So that means that even if you are fusing, you can always restrict yourself to L-degree polynomial. Then you have the fusion relation, and for the, this, kind of transfer, uh, this kind of diagram, you have what we uh, call the linear and rota relations. That just means that when you have two um, to a neon diagram. When you multiply two transfer matrices associated to the same neon diagram, uh, then you have the decondo. It's also equal to the sum of two terms and, and that are product of two over transfer matrices. And you have to shrink or extend the rectangular diagram uh, either in the one direction or the other. And that's why you have two terms. So that's why I tried to say this small picture. And then the interesting condition 
uh, is uh, the interesting stuff is uh, the inner boundary condition, and that relates to what I told the, uh, the correspondence between Young diagram and Kaktin King diagram. It's that if you have a Young diagram with uh, lots of boxes that saturate one R, you can take all these column pair and put them as lines in the other R. And so these two Young diagram actually they refer to the same representation. So you have two two different transfer matrices that are actually related and should be proportional. So this is, this is exactly the case. So as I said, if you take the smallest condition possible, but you have just one column and you put it as one line pair, this writes like this. And here, uh, this is a Veresignan, which is the equivalent of the quantum determinant, but for gradient model. And so as you see, if you look at the degree, in the, the polynomial degree of this object, uh, here you have L times Mn plus N, and here you have L times Mn plus N. So one of them is smaller than the other. And so you can feel that this inner boundary condition provides a way to lower the degree. It should provide a closer relation, and this is what we're looking for to make the T-matrix act on the separated basis, and so to solve the spectral problem. Uh, okay, lots of words on this slide, but basically what I'm just saying is that we have a or a whole hierarchy of equation, of fusion equation for the transfer matrix, and the eigenvalue of the transfer matrix have to satisfy them as well. So if you write the eigenvalue by Lagrangian calculation and saying that the value of the psi in the unity is just xn, you can construct all the higher polynomials by fusion, and what we say is that if you have a transfer matrix eigenvalue, you can write it like this, such that all the fused polynomials, they have to satisfy the whole fusion equation hierarchy, and especially the inner boundary condition and the fact that when you are outside the fat book, you have to, to go to zero. So, so this, is the, this is the lemma, and now the conjecture is that every solution of the system is also an eigenvalue. This is a converse of the lemma that we want to prove. That's what we want to prove. So to do so, we, have, uh, we, are, we were not able to prove it for the general case, uh, but rather we uh, placing us in the right condition, we can prove. Uh, and so to do so, we, we took the simplest of the, of the gradient model, that is uh, the union of the GL1 to algebra. We have to take M different from N in order for this stuff to, to work. Uh, and so let me specialize the discussion on this, uh, to, to this model from now. So we, the fat book is looking like this. Now your twist matrix, provided that you already put it in a Jordan block form, you have just one eigenvalue over there, and there you have the Jordan block. So either it's k2, k3, or it's k2, k2, and some other value, or, or one. Then the inner boundary condition pair, uh, how, do, how do you write that? Well, you have to first saturate one arm, so you have just there one column, and then you can put this column as a line under it, so then the, and saturate the other arm. So you have this correspondence between these two representations, and this writes like this. Okay. So you spot there is only one, uh, the k1, k1 is just there, and if you take k1 equals zero, so a special twist, uh, you have that t3 of u equals zero. And this considerably simplifies the fusion relations, and the way that the inner boundary could give us a closure relation. So that makes the computation of the T matrix acting on a separate basis trackable. So I must be confused. If K1 is 0, then K is not invertible. Invertible. Yes. Uh, yes. We, we just need the K to be invertible. even and simple spectrum. Okay. We do not need the invertible. Mm -hmm. The custom matrix uh, still define the basis of the space. Yeah. But do you later treat uh, the case where it is uh, the invertible or is it or so, so far it's pretty good? Well, in order to prove that we, we to, to solve the spectral problem explicitly, we have to rely on the single behavior. The rest is a conjecture. Yeah. Okay. And so we have the, the fusion relation, we can summarize them uh, as this relation. In the homogeneities, if you have T and T shifted, you get T2, which is basically just the, the, the two boxes uh, in a vertical way. And then you have the T, T2 shifted goes to zero. And this is very reminiscent of the fusion relation of GL3, 
uh, taking quantum determinant that is zero. And uh, you see it's only the same because of the convention of your orientation of the young so this we know how to do. And so we can completely characterize the spectrum of the transfer matrix using separation of variables. Uh, so the eigenvalues of the transfer matrix are polynomial of degree L, but writes like this. So this is just Lagrange like interpolation. And you have some parameters there, but on the side end, and they have to satisfy the following system of L cubic equation. And uh, this equation are just a fusion equation, so we write it. And then the associated unique eigenvector as separated form, uh, as we already, uh, we already know. So the proof of this is simple. So, well, if you take an eigenstate, then uh, the L cubic equation being just rewriting the diffusion equation, you are uh, automatically satisfied. So this is the, uh, the lemma I presented uh, earlier. Then the converse. Uh, Involved, you take x1, xl to be a solution of the system. You construct the t1 polynomial by Lagrange interpolation. You define the states t by its weight function in the separated basis, and they have this factorized form. And now I do not show you the computation, but we have t1, we have all the fusion relations, a simple one because we take k1 equals 0. So we know how t1 will act on this, even when we are already on the edge of the basis of the maximum value of some of the t inside this. And so we can perform the exact computation and identify that we have t1 times this scalar product. So that means, because this is true for all h1, hl, that t is an eigenstate of eigenvalue t1. So we've exactly characterized uh, the spectrum of t. We can compare this with our overall results from the, for example, the nested bit on that. Um, so from what we have, we had above, we can rewrite all, all that stuff in a quantum spectral curve. Uh, the expression from the nested bit uh, on that uh, uh, goes like this. So you have two q, two q uh, polynomials, but because we took k one equals zero, you just remain with this part. And uh, when comparing it, you can massage this expression, knowing some stuff about T2, to write it uh, as, uh, as is. So we can compare the, the, the two results and say they're exactly the same. This proves that the nested beta equation, so nested beta on that, is complete for this model. Okay, it's time to conclude. So we have a separated basis for a really integral model, and the construction is exactly the same as in the non-graded case. Uh, computing exactly the action of the transfer matrix of this basis uh, allows us to solve completely the spectral problem. It's complete. We have all the solution we do on that. Uh, inner boundary condition from the representation theory of the underlying superalgebra is what provides us the possibility to do this. And calculation of hard in the general, general case but simplify, as I showed, for some special cases, for example, young energy L12, uh, taking some special cases. So in the future, we would like to do this for uh, the GLM case without any restriction on the twist. Uh, it seems complicated, but not in case. Thank you. Thank you. Questions? So uh, thanks for the talk. Just a small question. In the beginning, there was a condition like product of x times product of x is not equal to zero. Could you comment what it was about? Oh uh, yeah, sure. Show it again. Uh, sure. Yes. Yeah. Okay. So x is the eigenvalues of separate variables essentially. No. 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 Uh, uh, it's not exactly the same notation as yours. <laughs> yes. Um, so in fact, when you take this form of uh, of uh, covector. So it's, you, you have a tensor form, and this is a one-sided vector S, okay? Mm -hmm. And the condition is that the dual of this uh, vector, you, when you write it in the canonical basis, it's right like this. Ah, is it about what reference space you have? Yeah, okay. exactly. And, oh, right. well, I, I did not elaborate on what or all this stuff and what is the numbering of this, but basically this relates to the Jordan block decomposition of the twist. And that means that for each Jordan block, you have to take the, the first coordinate associated to the Jordan block and ensure that it's not zero. What is the Jordan block? I thought you said it has a simple step, but you allow some Jordan still? It has a simple method. Oh, okay. Yeah. Sorry. 
And thanks to this, that's, that's what uh, ensures that this is non vanishing. More questions? So what about scalar products? Is it good to calculate scalar products? Well, um, to compute scalar product, there is uh, one limitation. Uh, well, we, we actually have an article uh, on scalar product of GL3 on the separated basis. And what we say there actually is that it's, we have a separated basis for the convector side. But the separated basis on the vector side is it's not the orthogonal one. So the coupling between the two is, is difficult. So to compute scalar product from there, between eigenstates when you have wave function of the eigenstates, it's a bit difficult because you have to characterize this measure as well. And so that was some part of the protocol. Um, you didn't yeah, maybe Julian is going to talk you about need, uh, You need to know how to do the action of the transfer matrix on the, on the spheres. And in the general case for GLMM, uh, we are saying that uh, we are a conjecture of how to compute it, and we are able to compute it just for a special uh, set of boundary matrices. So we have before to solve this, and after we can compute also a scalar product uh, by, by the same uh, technique that uh, we have used for the two. But here you basically calculate the action of the transfer lattice in this case. Uh, well, just for the end of GL12 with the, this oh, special, special twist. Okay. Otherwise, special twist. Special twist that we know. Otherwise, it's very unclear how this relation allows us to reduce powers of the first transfer matrix in small ones. Because if you reconstruct this from the first one, the fundamental one, this is really involved on both sides. Have lots of products uh, and, and shifted arguments and other stuff. So it's a bit confusing. Yeah. The fusion hierarchy. Huh? It's the fusion hierarchy of the transfer matrix. Yeah. 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 Yes. So I don't see any more questions, and then let's thank the speaker again. <laughs> <laughs> the morning